Uh, okay, let's start the session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all in this AI102 session. Myself, Archie D said, I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you want, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will be there to help you out. So let's moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-parting learning solution company. Now you will get a you will get a question like who we are and what we doing. So answering your question, we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement, and manage. Then a synergetic solution offering that is a persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution. Certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will, you will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification, then expert level certification. Uh, in fundamental level certification, we have AJ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we have many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. Then uh, expert level certification, we have AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. There's also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Then certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on, like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Pune Kurs. Emerging technology community for Surat Kurs. Azure Tech community for Nagpur Kurs. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Uh, today's speaker for this training is Smith Shah. He is a Microsoft certified trainer. Currently work with Synergetics as a training consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In this session, we are providing you AI102 learning achievement badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Uh, make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming relevant updates. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. So guys, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our webinar on AI 102. Before proceeding ahead, uh, just put a confirmation in the chat whether you can see my screen properly and whether I'm perfectly audible to you guys. So is my audio and uh, video streaming going properly? Yes, all right, fine. So now that I can see a confirmation in the chat, let's move forward. So guys, good morning once again to each and every one of you. Um, in today's webinar, we will learn about AI102. So AI102 is a certification course. And in this course, you will learn about how to perform AI engineering on the Azure portal. Now, before going ahead, let me give a brief introduction about myself. My name is Smith Shah. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. On top of that, I'm an Azure certified data engineer. 
a azure certified data scientist a azure certified ai engineer as well and i have been in the data science and ai field since the last 7 years wherein i have delivered training to multiple international as well as domestic clients including walmart capgemini lti mindtree deloitte and many many more so that was just a brief introduction about me now let's start with our webinar so as i mentioned earlier in our today's webinar we will learn about ai 102 which is a certification course in this certification course you will learn how to perform ai engineering on the azure portal so first let's understand what is ai you know the full form of ai it stands for artificial intelligence but let's understand what is it so guys if anybody asks you what is ai you will say that ai is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes first purpose is to get inferences from data by inference i mean getting insights from data second purpose is to get predictions from data by prediction i mean trying to know something about the future so let's say based on how it has rained till the year 2023 i want to predict how it will rain in the year 2024 that's an example of prediction so if anybody asks you what is ai you will say ai is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes first purpose is to get inferences from data second purpose is to get predictions from data now you might ask me that okay smith we know ai is used for getting inferences and predictions but how do we get it how do we get those inferences how do we get those predictions so guys we get it by using something called a ai model now this is a fancy term used in the market nowadays right ai model you guys might have heard of it what is a ai model so let me show you the definition of a ai model the definition might look complex at first but don't worry i will try to simplify it for you so what is a ai model so guys a ai model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process now as i mentioned earlier the definition on the first look might look complex but let's try to simplify it so what does the definition say it's a statistical representation of a real world process right let's try to simplify it in order to simplify it we'll take help of a example suppose in that example i have some data with me and i have obtained that data by surveying some of the houses in my locality so let's suppose i have information about area of the house in square feet and i also have information about the price of that house so let's say the first house that i surveyed had a area of 100 square feet and the price of the house was 1 crore the second house that i surveyed had a area of 200 square feet and the price of the house was 2 crore similarly the third house that i surveyed had a area of 300 square feet and the price of the house was 3 crore now i have a question for each and every one of you the question is let's suppose i have information about a fourth house the area of that house is 350 square feet but i don't know the price of that house i want you guys to predict the price of this fourth house so guys what do you think what could be the uh, price of this fourth house over here what are you guys predicting according to your prediction what should be the price of this fourth house so what suraj kumar has given a prediction in the chat suraj kumar mentions that as per his prediction the price of this fourth house would be somewhere around 3.5 crore even satyam praveen manthan prabhat and sachin have mentioned the same that according to them the price of this fourth house would be somewhere around 3.5 crore so sachin you have given a prediction to me okay now sachin in order to arrive at this prediction did you use some mathematics in your head yes or no i repeat my question sachin sachin you gave me a prediction in order to arrive at this prediction did you use some mathematics in your head sachin mentions in the chat that yes he did try to use some mathematics in his head that's exactly what a ai model also does just like you guys 
use mathematics or you guys use statistics to simulate a real world process that's exactly what a ai model also does a ai model also tries to use statistics also tries to use mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world just like sachin and all of you guys try to use mathematics or try to use statistics to simulate a real world process that's exactly what a ai model also does is this that currently the data that was shown to you was simple so that's why you applied simple mathematics if the data is complex then you will apply complex mathematics right similarly if a ai model sees simple data then it will apply simple mathematics if it sees complex data then it will apply complex mathematics okay so up till now we have covered two main things first thing that we have covered is what is ai okay first thing that we have covered is what is ai so we learned that ai is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes first is to get inferences from data second is to get in inferences from data sorry first is to get inferences from data second is to get predictions from data right so we know what is ai but then you guys had a question that okay ai is used for two purposes first is for getting inferences second is for getting predictions but how do we get those inferences and predictions so i mentioned that we get it by using something called a ai model so what is a ai model we learned that ai model is a statistical representation of a real world process in simple words we are trying to use statistics or we are trying to use mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world so up till now we know these two things over here if anybody has doubt over these two things that i have explained please let me know assuming that these two things are clear i am moving forward now let's go ahead now if at all you are going to make a ai model make sure to follow two important points point number 1 is that in order to create a ai model you need to have data with you and that data needs to have some rows and some columns i repeat before making a ai model there are two points that you there are two main points that you need to keep in mind first main point is that for creating a ai model you need some data and that data sh should be in row and column format okay second important point is that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column what is a feature column what is a target column well a feature column is a column that helps me to predict whereas a target column is a column that i want to predict let's understand the difference between a feature column and a target column with the help of a example so suppose i have data of some of the houses in my locality and here is the data shown to you on your screen now my first question to you is on this data can i create a ai model yes or no what do you feel on this data can i create a ai model yes or no i repeat my question my first question to you is you see your data in front of your screen it's housing data right it has some rows and columns so my question to you is on this data can i create a ai model whether it's a good ai model or a bad ai model that's a different thing but my main question is can i create a ai model yes right so satyam manthan rachna anmol gautam all of you guys are saying that yes we can create a ai model and you guys are absolutely right as per point number 1 for creating a ai model we needed data and that data should be in row and column format and here my data does have some rows and columns so it is also in row and column format so you guys are absolutely right on this data i can create a ai model now coming to second point the second point that i mentioned is the columns in the data will be of one of the two types either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column feature columns are those columns that help me to predict target column is that column that i want to predict so if i want to predict price then price will be which type of column i repeat my question to you we know what is a feature column we know what is a target column 
Feature column is a column that helps me to predict. Target column is a column that I want to predict. So if I want to predict price, then price will be which type of column? Atul has mentioned in the chat that it will be a target column. Atul is absolutely right. We know the difference between feature and target. Feature is a column that helps me to predict. Target is a column that I want to predict. So if I want to predict on price, then price will be my target column. And since square feet and city help me to predict price, they will be called my feature columns. So there are only two useful type of columns in your data. First is feature column. Second is target column. If at all we have any other column apart from feature and target, those are useless columns for us and those we have to remove from our data. Okay. So point number one mentioned that for creating a AI model, you need, to, you need to have data which should be in row and column format. Second point that I mentioned over here was that the columns in the data, there are only two useful columns in your data. One is feature column, second is target column. If at all we have any other column apart from feature and target, those are useless columns and we need to remove them from our data. Okay, now let's move forward. Now let's learn about the different approaches to create a AI model. First approach is that of machine learning approach. Second approach is that of deep learning approach. Now, what is the difference between machine learning approach and deep learning approach? Without going into the technical aspect of both the approaches, let's have an overview of both these approaches over here. So I mentioned over here that there are two main approaches to create a AI model. First is using the machine learning approach. Second is using the deep learning approach. In order to understand it in a simple manner, think of machine learning like a knife. On the other hand, you can think of deep learning like a machete. Now let's have an overview of both these approaches over here using this analogy of knife and a machete. So my question to you is, uh, and that this question is not related to AI, I'm asking a general question to everyone. That let's suppose I want to cut a simple object like a potato or a tomato or an apple. In that scenario, which is the tool that you will use? Will you use a knife or will you use a machete? I repeat my question. My question is, if you are cutting a simple object like a potato or a tomato or an apple, in that scenario, which tool will you use? A knife or a machete? So Anmol, Suraj, Praveen, Sachin and Rachna, all of you guys have, have mentioned the correct answer. That okay, if I'm going to cut a simple object like a potato or a tomato or apple, in that scenario, I will use a knife. Similarly, guys, if you are working on simple data sets, Simple data sets means data set wherein relationship between feature and target is simple to understand. On such a type of data set, it's better to use the machine learning approach. Okay. If you are working on simple data sets wherein the relationship between feature and target is easier for you to understand, on such data sets, it's better to apply the machine learning approach. Let me ask a second question to you. Again, this second question is also not related to AI. Just a general question. So guys, let's say I have a complex object in front of me, something like a coconut. So if I want to cut a complex object like a coconut, which will be the ideal tool for you to use? Will you use a knife or will you use a machete? If you have a complex object in front of you, which tool will you use to cut it? A knife or a machete? So Satya, Manthan, Anmol, Suraj, Raj, Sachin, everybody over here have given the correct answer that in order to cut a complex object like a coconut, you will use a machete. Similarly, guys, on complex data sets, complex data sets means data sets wherein relationship between feature and target is complex to understand. On such a type of data set, it is better to use the deep learning approach. Let me give you an example of a complex data set. So let's suppose in my data, I have one feature column and one target column. Okay, let's say we have a simple data like that, having only one feature column and one target column. Now, in my feature, I have information about different images. We know guys that image is made up of pixels, right? And each pixel has a value in it between 0 to 255. Right? So suppose in my feature column, I have information about different images. So let's say in the first row, 
I have pixel values of image one. And corresponding to that in the same row, I have the target value mentioned. So in my target, let's suppose I'm going to mention the sentiment of the person in that image. So whether that person in the image was happy or whether the person in the image was sad or whether the person in the image was showing neutral emotion. Okay, so I need to mention the sentiment. So let's say in my target column, I'm mentioning the sentiment of the person in that particular image, whether he was happy, sad or showing neutral emotion. Okay, so that's what I have in my first row. Let's say in the second row, I have pixel values of second image. And corresponding to that, I have the sentiment uh, mentioned of the person in the image, whether he was happy, sad or showing neutral emotion. Okay, in the third row, I have pixel values of third image. And corresponding to that, I have the sentiment of the person uh, present in the image, whether he was happy, sad or showing neutral emotion and so on. So let's say I have data like that. I have a data set like that. Now my question to you is, is this data set simple or complex? Okay, that means is the relationship between feature and target simple to understand or is it complex to understand? Let me ask the question in a different manner. So guys, looking at the pixel values of the image, looking at the pixel values, so let's suppose I have an image over here. Okay, let's say it's a three by three image. Uh, having three pixels in width, three pixels in height, three by three image, let's suppose. And within it, I have pixel values. We know pixel values will be between zero to 255. Okay, fine. So let's suppose we have values like this. So my question to you guys is looking at these pixel values. Okay, looking at these pixel values. Will you be able to figure out whether the sentiment present in the image is happy, sad or showing mixed emotion? Is it easy for you to understand or is it complex for you to understand? Pradhan and Raj have mentioned that it's complex. Similarly, other guys have also mentioned over here in the chat that it's complex just by looking at the pixel values. It will be complex for you to understand whether the sentiment shown in the image is happy, sad or neutral. Okay. So currently the data set that you are working on is a complex data set. And guys on complex data sets, always use the deep learning approach. Okay, always use the deep learning approach. So data sets that are simple, that means data sets wherein relationship between feature and target is simple to understand. On such a type of data set, go for machine learning approach. Whereas data sets wherein relationship between feature and target is complex to understand. On such type of data sets, go for deep learning approach. Okay. And it depends upon you as an engineer, which approach you are choosing. So I've given a rule of thumb that on simple data sets, go for machine learning approach. For on com uh, if you are working on complex data sets, then go for deep learning approach. So one difference I've mentioned to you, okay, that sim for simple data sets, go for machine learning. For complex data sets, go for deep learning. Okay. Although theoretically, guys, you can use any approach. Just like, for example, uh, let me give a uh, example that is not related to this field. Okay, let's say if you have a simple object with you, let's say a coconut, uh, let's say a potato or a tomato or apple, simple object with you. On that simple object, you can use a knife as well and you can use a machete as well. Though you were right in saying that knife will be ideal, but technically in order to cut a simple object, I can use knife and machete both, right? Similarly, on simple data sets, technically I can use machine learning and deep learning both. It's just that machine learning is more preferable. Similarly, let me take an example that is not related to AI again. Let's say if you have a complex object like a coconut. In order to cook a co coconut, will you use a knife or a machete? Technically, you can use both. You can use knife to cut a coconut as well. You can use a machete to cut a coconut as well. Although machete will be ideal to cut a coconut, but technically you can use both the tools. Similarly, if you're working on complex data sets, I can use machine learning approach as well. I can use deep learning approach as well. Is this that on complex data sets, deep learning approach will be more ideal. Okay, so one difference I've given to you that machine learning approach is more suitable for simple data sets, whereas deep learning approach is more suitable for complex data sets. Let's take 
let's understand more differences between the two. Now, let me ask a question uh, to one student. Okay, so let me ask a question to Manthan Bhatia. So Manthan, I have a question for you, buddy. So Manthan, I was uh, using that analogy of a knife and machete to give you an overview of these two approaches. So I'd asked the question to you earlier that in order to cut a complex, sorry, in order to cut a simple object like a potato or a tomato or apple, which tool will you use? And um, you mentioned that knife will be the ideal tool to use, right, Manthan? So what was the reason? You gave the correct answer, Manthan, but what was the for cutting a simple object like a potato or a tomato or a apple, you chose knife as the ideal tool, which was the correct answer. But what was the reason behind it? Why did you choose a knife? So when I ask you know, to cut simple objects like a potato or a tomato or apple, which tool will be ideal? Knife or a machete? You guys said. Not to cut simple objects, knife will be ideal. You guys were correct, but what was the reason? And with the reason, okay. Sorry, I'm getting disconnected in the middle, I guess, due to some internet issue. Am I perfectly audible to you guys? I hope I'm audible. Sorry, I got disconnected in the middle. I hope I'm perfectly audible. I'm audible, right? Prabhat? Yes. Okay. Immunos says that I'm audible. Okay. Yeah. So I was asking a question to Manthan and everybody else that when I asked you a question earlier, five minutes back, that in order to cut simple objects like a potato or a tomato or apple, which tool will be ideal to use? A knife or a machete? You guys chose a knife, which was the correct answer. But why did you choose a knife? What was the reason? Huh, so uh, Abhishek has mentioned one reason that knife will be cheaper. And that is correct uh, reason given by Abhishek over here, that knife is cheaper, right? So if our work can be done with cheaper tool, why to go for costlier tool, right? Machete will be costlier. Knife would be cheaper. So if our work can be done with cheaper tool, why to go for a costlier one? Similarly, guys, in machine learning, the mathematical computation involved is comparatively less. Okay? The mathematical computation involved is comparatively less. Whereas in deep learning, the mathematical computation involved is comparatively more. Okay, so in deep learning approach, what you will see is that more mathematical formulas will be applied. In machine learning approach, comparatively less mathematical formulas will be applied. Okay, so on the same exact data set, if I try to use the machine learning approach, that machine learning approach will use comparatively less number of mathematical formulas. So that means less number of mathematical formulas will be computed and if less number of mathematical formulas are computed, and let's say I'm uh, doing that computation on a cloud server. On a cloud server, guys, more computations you do, more cost you have to pay. Less computations you do, less cost you have to pay. So let's say all of this work I am doing on cloud server. Okay. So we know that in machine learning, on a data set, if you are trying to apply machine learning approach, machine learning approach has uh, lesser number of computations involved, whereas deep learning approach has more number of computations involved. So in machine learning approach, since less number of computations are involved, because of that, your computation cost will be low. Because of that, your computation cost will be low. Whereas the same exact data set, on the same exact data set, if you try to apply the deep learning approach, deep learning approach will have more computations involved. Because of that, your computation cost will be high. So the given uh, the reason given by Abhishek is absolutely correct. Okay, so the reason given by Abhishek was related to cost. So uh, remember uh, that machine learning approach will always have slightly lesser cost involved as compared to deep learning approach. So on the same exact data set, 
if you try to use the machine learning approach it will have lesser computation cost whereas on the same data set if you try to apply the deep learning approach it will have more computation cost okay so we have learned that okay machine learning approach is ideal for simple data sets whereas deep learning approach is ideal for complex data sets we also learned that machine learning approach has comparatively less number of computations involved because of which the computation cost is low whereas deep learning approach has more number of computations involved because of which the computation cost is high now let me ask a question again uh, so manthan again let me ask that question to you so i guess manthan has given the answer for it earlier at 10:33 pm i can see his answer uh, so i had asked the question to manthan same question earlier that okay manthan in order to cut simple object like a potato or a tomato or a apple which tool will you use a knife or a machete and you manthan had chosen a knife and he then he tried to give a an answer and the answer that he gave was okay why did he choose a knife so he had mentioned earlier that knife is much easier to handle it's a basic tool so it's much easier to handle right that's what manthan you are trying to convey right that knife is easier to handle knife is easier to handle right so let's say you have uh, moved to a new house and uh, let's say currently you are living in mumbai now you have got a job in hyderabad okay and you have bought a house on rent in hyderabad but now for kitchen you want to buy a tool now for day to day task you will only cut simple objects so you are thinking which tool to buy knife or a machete so one reason that abhishek gave was that okay i will choose a knife because knife is cheaper correct second reason for choosing knife is that knife is simple to handle similarly guys similarly machine learning model is simple to create machine learning model is simple to create okay so creating a ai model using machine learning approach is simple even though people who do not have greater technical knowledge even they will be able to create it whereas creating a machine ai model using deep learning approach will be complex for that more technical knowledge will be required okay more technical knowledge will be required uh, when we come into our um, future webinars at that time i will uh, explain how to create a, a ai model using machine learning approach how to create a ai model using deep learning approach you will see that creating a ai model using machine learning approach is very very easy okay even a person let's say who does not belong to this um, it background even they will be able to understand it very very easily it's very easy to create whereas creating a ai model using deep learning approach is slightly complex because there more technical concepts are used okay so your technical knowledge should be superior in that case so uh, manthan gave the correct answer that okay um, for cutting simple objects like a potato or a tomato or a coconut you will use a knife first reason was that knife is cheaper yes knife is cheaper okay similarly machine learning approach is cheaper second reason was that knife is simple to use similarly guys creating a machine learning model is simple okay you don't require much technical knowledge for it i mean some technical knowledge is required but it, it's very very easy okay whereas on the same exact data set same exact data set if on the same exact data set you try to create a deep learning model you will see it's much much complex okay uh, so uh, this is another reason all right so uh, up till now we have completed three points so i have mentioned that machine learning is ideal for simple data sets whereas deep learning is ideal for complex data sets second point that i mentioned is that machine learning uh, creating a ai model using machine learning approach is simple whereas creating a ai model using deep learning approach is complex third point that i made was uh, a machine learning uh, approach has comparatively less number of mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be low whereas deep learning approach has comparatively more number of mathematical computations because of which the computation cost will be high okay now one last question to everyone it's not related to this field 
I am asking a question that is not related to this field. I am asking a general question to you. So this one last question to you. So the question is, as far as cutting efficiency is concerned, which tool will be uh, will perform better in cutting knife or machete in general? As far as cutting efficiency is concerned, cutting performance, cutting performance is concerned, which tool will perform better? Knife or a machete? Abhishek and Satyam has given the correct answer, machete. Similarly, guys, as far as prediction performance is concerned, okay, let's say you're creating a AI model for, let's say, getting inferences or for predictions. Now, you want correct predictions, right? You don't want incorrect predictions. You want the predictions to be correct. So, as far as prediction accuracy is concerned, if you create a AI model using deep learning approach, the prediction accuracy will always be better as compared to using the machine learning approach. Okay. Just like machete will always perform better in cutting as compared to knife, right? Similarly, deep learning approach will always give you better prediction accuracy as compared to machine learning. So let's say on the same exact data set, if I try to use a deep learning approach to create an AI model, that AI model will give me better accuracy in terms of predictions. Whereas on the same data set, same exact data set, if I try to create an AI model using machine learning approach, it will give me comparatively lesser accuracy in terms of predictions. Okay. So over here, I with these four points, I just wanted to give you an overview of both these approaches. So guys, is the overview clear? So uh, in order to understand both these approaches, I use the analogy of a knife and a machete. So machine learning is like a knife, whereas deep learning is like a machete. Using this analogy, we try to understand both of these approaches over here. I'm not going into the technical aspect of both these approaches. Okay, I'm just trying to give you an overview. Clear? All right, fine. I can see a confirmation in the chat, so I'm moving forward. All right, so up till now, what all things we have covered? Let's have a quick recap of the same. So guys, we started our lecture by understanding what is AI, right? So we understood what is AI. So we said that AI is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. So then you had a question for me that, okay, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? So we get that by using something called a AI model. So then we understood what is a AI model. So we said that AI model is nothing but a set of tools. Sorry, AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, you are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics or using mathematics. After that, we learned two important notes before creating a AI model. First important note is that for creating a AI model, you need some data and that data needs to be in row and column format. Second important note is that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types. Either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be target, called a target column. If at all you have any other columns apart from feature and target, you will try to remove those columns from your data. Those columns that are uh, not feature column, not target column, those other columns are useless for us and we need to remove them. So this is what we had learned, right? Two points, important points for creating a AI model. Important points for creating a AI model. Okay, after that, we learned about the different approaches to create a AI model, right? After that, we learned about the different approaches to create a AI model. So to be specific, there are two main approaches to create a AI model. First is the approach of machine learning. Second is the approach of deep learning, right? And we try to have an overview of both these approaches. So I hope um, these four concepts that I have explained to you have made sense. If at all you have any doubts in these four concepts, then do let me know. Assuming that it is clear, I'm moving forward now. All right. Now let's understand the different types of AI models. Previously, I explained to you the approaches to create a AI model. 
now i am showing you the different types of ai models so guys remember that there are many many types of ai models on your screen i have only shown two types but there are many other types also in fact after almost 8 to 10 months a new type of ai model comes into the market okay so um, there are many many types of ai models but 95% of the work in the ai industry 95% of the work in the ai industry is done on these two types only the ones that are shown to you on your screen so that's why in our current webinar we will only talk about these two types okay but remember there are many other type of ai models also however we'll only look at the two main types first is called supervised learning model second type is called unsupervised learning model what is the difference between the two in case of a supervised learning model the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in case of a unsupervised learning model the data that i am using only has features but it does not have target okay i repeat we are looking into the types of ai models there are many many types of ai models after almost every 8 to 10 months a new type of ai model gets launched into the market okay but we will look into two types only today because 95% of the work done in the ai industry is done on these two types so we will look into only these two main types first main type of ai model is called supervised learning model second main type of ai model is called unsupervised learning model what is the difference between the two in case of a supervised learning model the data that i am using has features and target both whereas in case of a unsupervised learning model the data that i am using only has features but it does not have target after that you should remember that supervised learning models are further divided into two types classification and regression i repeat supervised learning models are further of two types first is classification model second is regression model what is the difference between classification and regression well in case of a classification model your data uh, in your data your target column has finite set of possibilities so if at all you are working on any data where in your target column has finite set of possibilities finite set of possibilities means limited set of possibilities so if you are working on data where in your target column has finite set of possibilities or limited set of possibilities then that model will be called a classification model on the other hand if you are working on data where in your target column has infinite set of possibilities infinite set of possibilities means unlimited set of possibilities so if you are working on data where in your target column has infinite set of possibilities or unlimited set of possibilities then that model will be called a regression model let's understand the difference between a classification model and a regression model with the help of a example so suppose i have data with me in that data i have a target column called dice roll okay the target column is a dice roll so let's say i'm playing a game of dice with my friends and whatever value i get after rolling the dice that value i am storing in the in this column so let's say when i first roll the dice i get the value 4 then when i roll the dice again i get the value 6 after that when i roll the dice i get the value 1 then when i roll the dice again i get the value 6 and so on so let's suppose this dice roll column is my target column let us uh, let us assume that this dice roll column is my target column now guys in this dice roll column how many different uh, possible values can we get let me put a question in a different manner so guys when i roll a dice how many possible values can i get when i roll a dice how many possible values can i get raman suraj and everybody else has mentioned six right so when we roll a dice we have only six possible values to get either we can get the value 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 apart from the six possibilities we can't get anything else so in dice roll you have six possibilities that means you have limited set of possibilities in other words you have finite set of possibilities so if dice roll column was your target column and if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities then your model will be called a classification model let's take another example let's suppose i have a column with me called gender and what i am doing is i am storing the gender value of every employee in my office 
let's say the first employee in my office had a gender of male the second employee in my office had a gender of female the third employee in my office had a gender of female and so on now i have a question to you let's suppose this gender column was your target column then in this target column how many possible values can we get in this target column how many possible values suraj raman everybody is mentioning two right uh, the gender value can be either male or female all right so that means you guys are saying that we have finite set of possibilities in gender i have limited set of possibilities that means finite set of possibilities so if gender was your target column and if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities or limited set of possibilities then your model will be called a classification model let me take another example suppose i have a column with me called stock price and what i am doing is i am storing the price of a stock that i have bought after every day let's say on the first day the price of the stock was 100.279 rupees after that on the next day it was 99.8 rupees then on the third day it was 99.97 rupees and so on so if this stock price column was your target column so my question to you is in this target column do we have finite set of possibilities or do we have infinite set of possibilities what do we have infinite right as suraj mentioned infinite set of possibilities so if stock price column was your target column and if in your target column you have infinite set of possibilities then your model will be called a regression model okay so with this guys we have completed basics of ai so guys is basics of ai clear to you is it clear to each and every one clear guys i hope it's clear yes all right fine now coming to our main webinar the main topic of our webinar which is about ai 102 ai 102 so ai 102 talks about how you can do ai engineering on the azure platform you know what is ai okay you at least know what is ai fine so let's jump into how we can perform ai engineering on the azure platform which is the main topic of our webinar today okay uh, the code given to this certification is ai102 by the way this is the code given to this certification okay i am sending a link of the home page of the ai102 certification you can go through it you can see the cost of the certification so in indian rupees i guess the cost is around uh, 4800 okay let me check in indian rupees what is the cost let me search for india in this drop down mn okay okay i guess india will come at the top okay let me search for a value at the top here is india i am selecting it and you can see the cost for this certification exam is 4800 all right remember that it will be a mcq based exam okay and you were you will have uh, anywhere between 40 to 60 questions asked in your examination okay the number of uh, mcqs is never fixed okay uh, but you can expect anywhere between 40 to 60 mcq questions the total duration is of 2 hours okay and uh, in within those two hours you need to answer each and every mcq that is being asked you can expect anywhere between 40 to 60 mcqs and remember the total marks of the examination is 1000 out of which you need to score at least 700 to pass the examination okay uh, good, the good thing about this examination is that it's mcq based and there is no negative marking so if at all you enter a incorrect answer uh there is no negative marking involved okay so it's not like any penalty is given uh, so there is nothing like that so make sure that you answer each and every mcq that is present over there but as there is no negative marking involved okay sorry also another point remember that uh, the sorry what was the point that i was trying to mention i forgot um so i've mentioned about the number of mcqs i've mentioned about duration i've mentioned about the total number of marks that you need to score ha huh. coming to the fourth point which is that during the examination 
you won't know uh, that which MCQ question has uh, which weightage assigned to it. So every MCQ question will have different weightage. Okay, every MCQ question will have different weightage. Uh, some MCQ question will have uh, 50 marks assigned to it. Some MCQ question will have 20 marks assigned to it. Some MCQ question could have 25 marks assigned to it. But when you are attempting the examination at that time, you won't know the weightage. So for you, every MCU question will be of equal importance. Okay, so treat every MCU question uh, equally. Um, so do not skip any MCU question. All right, and each MCU question will have a different weightage. If the MCU question is complex, it will have more marks assigned to it. If the MCU question is simple, it will have less marks assigned to it and so on. Uh, the uh, drawback is that during the examination, you don't know that this MCU question has what weightage assigned to it. So treat every MCU question uh, in an important manner only. All right, so these were the points that I wanted to mention about this certification exam. Now uh, let's learn something. Uh, let's learn the concepts behind it. So guys, what Azure has done is Azure has created many, many ready-made AI models. So it has created AI models and it has made those AI models available to us on the Azure platform. So you're in this course of AI 102, you, are, you will not be asked to create a AI model. Okay, uh, you won't be getting questions asked that will be related to creating a AI model. Azure has already created AI models for you and those AI models it has made it available on the Azure platform. So all the questions in your certification exam will be related to how you can use those ready-made AI models. Okay, uh, you will not even get a single question that will be asking you a concept related to creation of a custom AI model. You, no, you don't have to uh, uh, know how to create a custom AI model. Okay, Azure has already created AI models for us over here and it has made it available on the Azure platform. So all you need to do is know how to use those ready-made AI models, that's all. So what Azure has done is, Azure has created multiple AI models and those multiple AI models, it has segregated across nine categories. And these are the nine categories. Um, uh, to be specific, the official word for it that Azure uses is services. You can think of this as services or you can think of this as categories. Whichever name you want to give, you can give. Although the official term that Azure uses is services. So Azure has created AI models. So we have ready-made AI models that Azure has created and it has segregated it across nine categories or nine services. So let's have an overview of each of these services. So let's start with the first one, which is document intelligence service. So here guys, you will get access to AI models. You will get access to AI models that will help you to scan information from documents. That will help you to scan information from documents. Let me explain a use case for this particular service or for this particular category. So guys, I have a habit. Uh, what is the habit that I have? See guys, after the end of every month, I get an invoice from the company that I'm working with. And in that invoice, they mention details about uh, what will be the compensation that I will get. Then what is my GST number and so on. Okay. So since I'm working on contract, I always give a GST number to them so I can avail ta tax benefits and so on. Anyways, the point that I'm mentioning is that um, after the end of every month, I get an invoice from the company that I'm working with. And in that invoice, every detail is mentioned that what will, what will be the compensation that I'll get for that month? What is the GST number to which that compensation will be say, um, sent to and so on and so forth. Every detail is mentioned in that invoice. Now I have, I have a habit that I go through the invoice manually, take the compensation amount mentioned in it, and I put that compensation amount in a separate Excel sheet. And in that separate Excel sheet, I keep a track of the compensation amount for every month. So in that Excel sheet, I'll keep a track that, okay, in June month, what is the amount that I got? In July month, what was the amount that I got? And so on. 
So what is my habit that I go through the invoice document every month. I go through the invoice document manually, take the information mentioned in it, and I put that information in a separate Excel sheet. But currently, this entire process is done manually by me. What if I want to do it automatically? And that to add scale. By scale, I mean I want to do this on more number of documents. See, for one document, if you follow manual process, it's fine. Let's say you're working in a government agency where daily you might have to scan 10,000 documents. Will you go to 10,000 documents manually, get information from it, and take the information, mention it in a separate extra sheet? It will be very tedious for you. So let's say you want to automate this process of getting data from a document. Well, you can go ahead and take help of this category or take help of this service called document intelligence service. Here you will get access to AI models. Here you will get access to AI models that will help you to get information on a document. So let's say if you ask the AI model that, okay, give me the date mentioned in the invoice. It will give you the date. If you ask the AI model, give me the compensation amount mentioned in the invoice. It will give you the compensation amount. So you don't have to go through a uh, scanning of the document manually. No, you will just ask the AI model what information you want and it will give you that information. Okay, so this is about document intelligence service. Let me move on to our second service, which is called language service. Okay, so with this service, uh, you can go ahead and build conversational chatbots. Okay, you can go ahead and analyze text. So for example, let's say uh, I have a cloud kitchen. I have a cloud kitchen that I'm running on Zomato. Okay, now whenever anybody buys a product, buys my food product from my cloud kitchen, uh, they can leave their review, right? That whether the food was good or bad or whatever. Now let's say I've received thousand such reviews. I want to analyze those text reviews. But the thing is, it will be very tedious for me to analyze those thousand reviews. Secondly, the thing is maybe in those reviews, uh, somebody has put a review in a different language. Let's say I only know Hindi language. I don't know uh, Tamil language. Okay. So what if I want to analyze those reviews as well? Because even those customers are important for me. So what if I want to analyze those Tamil reviews as well? Well, you can take help of this language service, which will help you to analyze text. It could be of any language, does not matter. It will help you to analyze text. That what is the sentiment of the reviews? Uh, then many, many things you can analyze. Okay. So one important thing is sentiment that, okay, whether the review was positive, negative or whatever. So there are some predefined um, analysis that you can choose from. One is sentiment analysis. Okay. Uh, second is entity analysis. Entity means that, okay, in that particular text, what is the important names mentioned? So for example, uh, uh, we have a name like, let's say, uh, uh, statue of unity. So statue of unity is an important name. It's an entity. Similarly, we have a name like London. So London is an important name. It's an entity. Okay. Then we have a name like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is an important name. It's an entity. Now that entity can belong to different categories. Some entity could be belonging to location category. Some entity could be belonging to any other category and so on. So entity analysis is second option that you can choose from. Like that, there are some predefined uh, options, analysis options that you can choose from over here. So that is one thing that you can do. Uh, second thing that you can do apart from analyzing text is you can build conversational chatbots. So let me give you an example of a conversational chatbot. So let me go to lg.com and have a look over here, guys. Currently in their website, they have integrated a chatbot. And uh, through that chatbot, you can ask certain questions and you will get an answer based on that. Okay, so let's say I will say that I want to service my AC. So it will give me some answer based on that. Okay, it says that, okay, if you want to service, then uh, book an appointment and so on and so forth. Some answer it is given. The point that I want to make is currently in their in, in the LG website, they have a chatbot integrated. So let's say you want to build a similar chatbot 
but you do not have technical knowledge. Okay, let's say uh, you're from a HR background. You do not have technical knowledge, but you still have a website and you want to integrate a chatbot into your website. What you can do? Come to this service called language service and it will help you to build your chatbot of your choice without any code. Not a single line of code you have to write. It will help you to build a chatbot and that chatbot then you can integrate into your website. Okay, no need to write any code whatsoever. So you can take help of this service as well as well language service. Talking about uh, our third service, which is called vision service. The so vision service is used to analyze images as well as videos. Okay, it is used to analyze images as well as videos. So there are a predefined analysis options that you can choose from. So for example, one analysis could be um, uh, object detection in an image, object detection in a video. So that is one analysis option. Second analysis option is caption generation. So for example, in an image or in a video, what is happening? So for example, if you have an image where a person is walking a dog, so it should generate a caption that, okay, in this image, what is happening? A person is walking a dog. Similarly, in this video, what is, what is happening? This is what is happening. So second analysis option is caption generation. Like that, there are other analysis options that you can choose from. It's a predefined analysis option. So you have to choose an option from those. I mean, you have to choose a, a value from those available options only. Okay, fine. So in this, with the help of vision service, you can go ahead and analyze images and videos if you want. Talking about our fourth service, which is called speech service which can be used to convert speech from one language to another. A good use case of that uh, could be in, uh, let's say, these geopolitical bilateral meetings. So let's say, for example, our prime minister goes to Russia for a bilateral meeting. Now you would have seen those videos there. What happens? Putin tries to speak in Russian language, but to understand what Putin is speaking, our prime minister, Mr. Modi, would have a earpiece in his ear. Right. And in that ERP, some translator will translate Putin's speech from Russian to Hindi. And that's how Mr. Modi gets to know what Putin is speaking. Similarly, vice versa, Mr. Modi would convey something in Hindi language. Uh, and, you know, to understand what Mr. Modi is speaking, Mr. Putin would have a earpiece in his ear. Where through that earpiece, uh, someone would try to translate Modi's text from, uh, sorry, Modi's speech from Hindi to Russian and so on. Right. So, but currently this speech translation is being done manually. What if you want to automate it? You can take help of this service called speech. It will help you to translate a speech from one language to another in real time. Okay. Uh, and don't worry, we'll see a demo of that today. So you will understand the working. Okay, fine. After that, coming to our fifth category of service, which is translator service. So let's suppose we have a student with us. Uh, well, let's say that student is Yusuf and Yusuf has published a book. Okay. But now what Yusuf has done is Yusuf has published a book in Hindi language. But in order to get better sales, what Yusuf is thinking is let's uh, put it, let's publish book in international markets as well. But in international markets, maybe a book with Hindi language will not get sold much. So what Yusuf is thinking, why doesn't, why don't I translate my book into other languages as well? Okay, so Yusuf currently wants to translate his book in other languages. So what Yusuf could do, Yusuf could hire a, a person, a manual person who will translate his book into any language that he wants. But there are a lot of problems that person, if he's a single person, um, that person um, uh, could... I mean, at the end of the day, is a human, so he can do mistakes. So mistake is one problem. Second problem is it could take a lot of time. So you might say, okay, why don't we hire multiple translators? With that, your cost will increase and so on. So instead of this manual process, what if Yusuf wants to do his translation work, but he does not want to follow that manual process? Yusuf can come to this service called translator service, and he can translate his book from one language to any other language that he wants. Okay. Uh, and that too at minimal cost. And that too at scale, uh, which much, much past the time. Within seconds, the translation will be over. Okay. All right. So this is our fifth category of service called translator service. 
Now coming to our sixth category, which is content safety. Okay. So with this service, uh, you can make sure that whatever text content or whatever image content that you have, um, you can put a filter across it um, and uh, make sure that whatever text is being received, whatever image is being received, there is nothing offensive in it. Okay. So for example, let's say we have a student with us. Let's say that student is, let me take a student from our chat. Let me scroll above. Let's say the student is Lakshmi. So let's say Lakshmi uh, has her uh, YouTube channel. And what Lakshmi wants to do is, um, Lakshmi comes live uh, every day on uh, her YouTube channel. And what Lakshmi wants to do is, um, Lakshmi receives a lot of comments in our videos. So Lakshmi, Lakshmi is thinking, why don't we hire a chat moderator so that there is nothing offensive in those comments? Okay, so maybe Lakshmi could hire a chat moderator, giving give him, uh, uh, you know, those uh, moderator rights in in her YouTube channel, and then that chat moderator will take care that okay, there is nothing offensive any in in any comment that a user is posting. Okay, but instead of following this manual process, what if you want to automate it? You can take help of this service called Content Safety Service. And with that, you can make sure that whatever text you are receiving, whatever image you are receiving, there is nothing offensive in it. There is nothing inappropriate in it. Okay. So uh, content safety helps to make sure that uh, there is nothing offensive or there is nothing any, uh, there is nothing inappropriate in your text that you are receiving or in your images that you are receiving. Okay. Fine. So it's just to put a uh, filter. Okay that if at all you are receiving some offensive uh, information, filter that out. All right. After that, another service is called search service. Okay. So what does it do? So guys, it does two things. It analyzes images and it analyzes text. Now, you might tell me that okay, in order to analyze the images, images we had vision service. In order to analyze text, we had a language service. So guys, search service does not have its own AI model for doing analysis. For analyzing images, it takes help of vision service. For analyzing text, it takes help of language service. So search service does not have its own AI model for analysis. It gives you an option to do both analyzing images as well as analyzing text. The, the uh, uh, main point about this service is after analyzing information from text and images, it takes all of that information and it organizes it in a better way and it organizes it with the help of indexes. Okay, its main feature is that it organizes that analysis data. So yes, it analyzes images and it helps you to analyze text. And for doing that analysis, it does not have its own AI model. For analyzing images, it will take help of AI model under vision service. For analyzing text, it will take help of AI model under language service. Okay. The main thing about this search service is that once it will do the analysis, it will organize that analysis data in a better way. How does it organize it? It organizes the analysis data with the help of indexes. So guys, in our school time, if you remember, when we used to write our notes in a notebook, if you remember at the starting of the notebook, we used to have an index page. What was that index for? It, it was there, it was present to help you organize your notes, right? So if at all your teacher asked you that, okay, show me the uh, note of chapter number 10. Now you went into your index, you found that, okay, chapter number 10 is written at this page. So you directly went at that page and so on. Okay. So search service does exactly that. It helps you to analyze images. It helps you to analyze text. Okay. But it organizes the data in a much better way in the, with the help of indexes. So let's say if you ask it that, okay, give me this analysis data, it will be able to search for that analysis data much faster. Why? Because it is storing it in the form of indexes. Okay, so its main feature is that it organizes the data with the help of indexes. That's its main feature. Okay, all right. Talking about our other services. So we have OpenAI service and we have 
53 service. So guys, this service has been made by a different company called OpenAI Company. So guys, OpenAI Company has tied up with Azure Company. So OpenAI Company, you might have heard of it. Uh, there is a popular tool used in the market nowadays called ChatGPT. So this ChatGPT tool has been made by OpenAI Company. Okay. So OpenAI Company has tied up with Azure Company. So whatever OpenAI models, I mean, whatever AI models uh, OpenAI creates, it makes it available on Azure as well. Okay, it makes it available on Azure as well. Fine. So uh, here in both the service guys, you have something called Gen AI models. Here you don't have AI models. You have something called Gen AI models. Now Gen AI term is used in the market a lot, right? So how is Gen AI different as compared to traditional AI? Let's understand that. Okay, how is Gen AI different as compared to traditional AI? Let's go ahead and let's have an overview of the same. So Gen AI term is used in the market a lot. So how is Gen AI different as compared to traditional AI? So in traditional AI guys, there was a big drawback. Let's understand that drawback. Let's understand that limitation. So let's understand the limitation of traditional AI. So the limitation in traditional AI was with respect to target column. And what was that limitation? Let me explain it to you. So that limitation was with respect to target column. So in traditional AI, your target column could be of discrete nature or it could be of continuous nature. Discrete nature means a column having finite set of possibilities. Continuous column means a column having infinite set of possibilities. I repeat, discrete column means a column having finite set of possibilities. Continuous column means a column having infinite set of possibilities. Okay. Now, if your target column was of discrete nature, then it could have numeric values in within it as well as non-numeric values within it. Okay, it could have numeric values within it as well as non-numeric values within it. Okay, an example of discrete numeric column is something like dice roll. So let's say dice roll is your target column. And here you're storing the values uh, that you're obtaining after you're rolling your dice. So let's say when I first roll the dice, I get the value four. Then when I roll the dice, I get the value six. Then when I roll the dice, I get the value one and so on. Okay. Now in this dice roll column, do I have finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities? Finite set of possibilities, right? When I roll a dice, I have only six possibilities. Either I can get the value one, two, three, four, five or six. Apart from the six possibilities, I don't have anything else. So that means if dice roll column was your target column, then in this target column, you have finite set of possibilities. You have limited set of possibilities. So this target column was a discrete target column. Now within discrete, have a look. Does it have numeric values or non-numeric values? So if you have a look at the values of your target column, you can see it has numeric values. So dice roll column is an example of a discrete numeric target column. What is an example of a discrete non-numeric target column? So something like gender. So let's have gender as a target column. And what I'm doing, I'm storing the gender value of every employee in my office. Let's say the first employee had a gender of male, second employee had a gender of female, and so on. Now, if this column is your target column, then do we have finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities? Well, in gender column, I would have two possibilities, either male or female. That means I have finite set of possibilities. So Fine, this target column called gender is a discrete column because it has finite set of possibilities. Now within discrete, does it have numeric values or non-numeric values? If you have a look at the values of your target column, you can see it has non-numeric values. So gender is an example of a discrete non-numeric target column. So guys, in traditional AI, a discrete numeric target column was allowed as well as a discrete non-numeric target column was allowed. But if your target column was continuous, then only numeric continuous target column was allowed. A non-numeric continuous target column was not allowed. A non-numeric continuous target column was not allowed, guys. Okay, so an example of a continuous numeric target column would be something like stock price. 
so let's say in this this is my target column and here i'm storing the price of a stock after every day so let's say on the first day it was 100.978 rupees on the next day it was 99.1 rupees on the third day it was 99.25 rupees and so on okay so here in the stock price column i have infinite set of possibilities so stock price will be a continuous target column within continuous does it have numeric values or non numeric values you can see values of your target column it is numeric so stock price is the example of continuous numeric target column so in traditional ai you can have a continuous numeric target column but a continuous non numeric target column was not allowed in traditional ai so an example of a continuous non numeric target column would be something like tweets okay so let's say i'm storing the tweets made by uh, uh let's say putin okay let's say russia's uh, uh, head putin okay uh, mr putin so i'm storing the tweets made by him so let's say he has made a tweet for saying hi then the next tweet made by him is how are you and so on let's say some tweet is mentioned okay now this is an example of which type of column discrete or continuous you are have infinite set of possibilities in tweets right putin can tweet anything so i have infinite set of possibilities so it's an example of a continuous target column within continuous does it have numeric values or non numeric values you can see it as non numeric values so this tweets is an example of a continuous non numeric target column so such a target column was not allowed in traditional ai so gen ai was invented specifically to solve this limitation so what was the limitation in traditional ai that a continuous non numeric column was not allowed as a target column so to solve this limitation gen ai was invented to solve this limitation gen ai was invented okay and guys in gen ai i mean uh, let's take an example of a tool called chat gpt i guess all of you have already heard about this tool or, or at least have used it once so guys in that tool as a output do you get non numeric values or not do you get non numeric values or not as output output means prediction that's what that model is predicting do you get non numeric values and is there a fixed possibility of output that you get or do you have infinite set of possibilities that the model can give so the model gives the output from finite possibilities or infinite possible infinite right as satyam mentions so that chat gpt tool what it is uh, giving as a output that means it's predicting something that output is nothing but that model's prediction okay uh, so it is predicting a target value and uh, currently uh, uh, that target value that it is predicting is of continuous non numeric nature so gen ai field was invented invented just to solve this limitation of traditional ai so let me ask you a question based on it what is the limitation of traditional ai this question is to each and every one of you what is the limitation of traditional ai what is the limitation of traditional ai anyone with the limitation i explain the limitation to you what is it okay so manthan raman everybody has given an answer okay so uh, uh, you guys have mentioned that in traditional ai a continuous non numeric target column was not allowed okay you could have a continuous non numeric column as a feature column but a continuous non numeric column as a target column was not allowed okay that was the limitation in traditional ai so that's why gen ai was invented and its entire purpose was to solve this limitation okay so coming back to our services guys so these two services the ones that i am highlighting have gen ai models in them the other seven services have ai models okay these have ai models whereas the two services on which i have put a box have gen ai models in them okay so this service called open ai service as well as the first service on which i am putting a box both of these services have been created by open ai company is this that the first service has something called small language models that means the gen ai model uh, is built for a small purpose it's not a all rounder it's built for a specific purpose 
small purpose okay so that's why the model will be of a small size because it's built for a very specific small purpose okay let's say for example in my company um uh, i want to build a ai model that predicts uh that let's say summarizes a uh, text from one language or let's say con le small, small purpose okay let's say summarizes a essay so there is a big essay given of five, 10 pages i have built a gen ai model that summarizes it and um summarizes it into two or three sentences okay so that's the gen ai model that i have invented but I've invented it only for a specific purpose. It will only be used for that particular small purpose, nothing else. Okay, so in the first type of service, you have something called small language models. Whereas in the second type of service on which I've put a box, here you have something called large language models. Your large language models are used for uh, multiple purposes. For example, that chat GPT tool, the ones that you are using, I'm sure you might have at least heard of it or you might have used it. So behind the scenes, a large languages model is used and you, you might be using it for multiple purposes. You can use it to convert a uh, text from one language to another. You can use it to summarize text. You can use it to analyze images, right? So many, many things you can do. Many, many things you can do. So there, uh, a large language model is being used behind the scenes. Currently, I'm just giving you an overview of small language model and large language model. That large language model is like an all-rounder. It does multiple things. Whereas small language model is used, is built for a, only for a specific purpose. Okay, fine. So um, guys, the point that I wanted to make was that this certification course, which is AI102, in this certification course, you will not get questions asked based on how to create your own models. So models are already created by Azure and it has uh, distributed those models across different categories or different services. So, so to be specific, Azure has created some models. Okay, so we have ready-made models um, that Azure has created for us. And those ready-made models, Azure has divided into nine categories or nine services. So all we need to understand is how to use these services. Okay. So how to use the models in these services. That's all you need to know. Okay. So as far as this certification course is concerned, all you need to know is how to use the AI models under these services. So guys, is the overview of these nine services clear to everyone? Is the overview of these nine services clear to everyone? Satendra says, what, uh, what could be a use case in which small language model could be used? See, uh, Satyam, what could happen is, uh, if you, let's say you're using a large language model, it's an all-rounder. Okay, so let me uh, ask you in this manner, Satendra, that uh, let's say you are uh, a CEO of a company. Okay, you are a CEO of a company. You want to hire a person uh, who does backend work. Who does backend work only? Okay, that's your requirement as a CEO. Now there are two choices in front of you. Employee one knows backend and front end both. Backend and front end both. Whereas employee two knows only backend. So your task. See, your task is that, okay, you should, uh, you want to hire a person who does backend job. Okay. So you can hire employee one also. He can only do, he can also do backend job. You can hire employee two also. He can also do backend job. But which employee will cost you less? You tell me. Which employee will cost you less? Employee one or employee two? Which employee will cost you less? Second one will cost you less, right? Because the first employee is an all-rounder, he can do many, many things. So, for lesser cost, you will go for employee two. Okay, for lesser cost, you will go for employee two. Similarly, Satendra, let's say I want to build a Gen AI model, but I don't want my Gen AI model to do all the tasks. I only want to build a Gen AI model for a specific task. Okay, for a specific task. See. Uh, 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 here, 
in this service also you have access to jenny i models you are also have access to jenny i models okay uh, in the second service you have access to jenny i models that do multiple things they summarize text for you okay they uh, summarize text for you they translate text for you okay they analyze images for you and so on whereas you want to build a model and the only purpose of that model is let's say you want to build a model that does only one thing that only does summarization of text that's it so you tell me satendra which one will cost you less the small language model or this large language model well you can use both with both your job will be done but as far as cost is concerned which one will cost you less small language model or a large language model small language model right so if my ta if my goal is less okay then why to pay additional cost and that's what people were complaining that okay they previously we didn't have these small language models available we had only large language models so people complained that i am doing small task only okay why should i pay higher cost for a large language model large language model is like a all rounder okay because it's capable of doing so many things it will cost you more okay if you use a large language model it will cost you more so people complain that i am only doing small work so why to pay such a high fee for a large language model so then azure said that okay they they reached out to open ai company and they asked open ai company that okay please create small language models uh, yes small language models are not all rounders they won't do all the tasks but they will do specific specific tasks and uh, the main thing about this is cost okay so for example if you want to summarize text there is a small language model available to summarize text you can use that use that and it will charge you very less okay similarly there will be different small language models for different tasks okay fine so prabhat it's just a name that is given to this service uh, there is no particular uh, logic behind it just the name that is given to that okay it's a uh, uh, for you to understand just remember that it has small language models in them okay it's just the name that is given nothing else so for example you say why uh, some someone could ask why uh, open ai company was named open ai so maybe because of some reason some name would have been given name does not matter the things inside of it matters okay uh fine all right so over here uh, currently what i have explained to you is what is ai then i have explained to you uh, that in this certification course called ai 102 you don't need to understand how to create custom ai models azure has already created ai models for you and it has um distributed those ready made ai models across nine services or nine categories so all you need to do is you need to understand how to use the ai models across these services across these categories that's all you need to know okay and if you know that you will be easily able to pass this certification exam of ai 102 okay the code for this certification exam is ai 102 okay fine up till now making sense everyone good to proceed making sense yes or no making sense kisho says please explain content sp okay so kisho uh, what it does is this service has ai models that does two things it monitors text and it monitors images so kisho uh have you come across a youtube channel that does live videos yes in that li in those live videos um if you see users can put live comments over there right in real time they can put comments uh, on that live video now what do those youtube creators do whoever uh, is doing a live video what do they do if you look closely they will always hire a chat moderator okay because they can't trust people out there maybe some people try to put some offensive comment in their youtube video and so on okay so what do they do they always hire a chat moderator so maybe they have some friend or a relative uh, they give access to that friend or a relative 
that okay now you will be the one who will do that chat moderation make sure that there is nothing offensive uh, coming um in in my uh, youtube channel there is no offensive text uploaded there is no offensive image uploaded and so on okay but what do they do they hire a manual person okay now uh, what if in one second 10 to 20 com comments are coming in that one person will find it difficult right um, also that person is a human at the end of the day he might do some mistakes okay uh, so what if you want to make sure that whatever text you are receiving whatever images you are receiving there is nothing offensive in it then you can take help of ai models under this service called content safety service it will make sure that whatever text you are receiving whatever images you are receiving there is nothing offensive in it okay its job is only that to make sure that if at all there is some offensive stuff in your text or if there is some offensive stuff in your images it will remove that stuff for us okay its only job is that clear kisho any other doubt you had a uh, pradeep currently it only uh, analyzes text and images uh, but ha huh, what we can do is uh, we can use a work around as you mentioned if you wanted to employ this on videos what you can do is you can break down those videos into multiple images because see a video at the end of the day is nothing but a collection of uh, multiple images right that's how a video is made behind the scenes but currently by default on a video you can't use this service in this service the ai models are specifically made for working only on text and images so on that video you can break it down into multiple images and those multiple images you can pass okay uh, but directly you cannot pass a video you can break down those images sorry you can not you can break down those video that video into multiple images and then you can pass it but currently content safety service can only work on text and images that's all okay fine so uh, guys i explained to you uh, what is ai i also explained to you that in this course called ai 102 you don't need to remember how to create custom ai model so ready made ai models are there all you need to do is you just need to understand how to use them okay and azure has created those ai models for us and it has distributed those ai models across nine categories or nine services now guys in your ai 102 curriculum uh, you only have eight services this one was introduced two months back it is not there in your ai 102 curriculum so in your ai 102 curriculum you have only eight services okay and you only need to know how to work with these eight services that's it okay this ninth service was introduced two months back and it's not in, uh, introduced in ai 102 curriculum yet okay fine so up till now i hope it's clear what we will do is uh, we'll take a short tea break of 10 minutes after that we'll be back and uh, i will show you how to work with these services so guys in our today's lecture we'll focus on three important services okay uh, first is open ai service second is speech service okay and third is document intelligence service so these are the three services that we will be covering in our current webinar okay because we have limited time in our current webinar our webinar today is of only 8 hours total so in our current webinar we'll only look at these three services okay fine uh like this guys we'll create more and more webinars and in each webinar we'll try to work with different different services but in our today's webinar we'll only work with these three services first is open ai second speech and third document intelligence okay so let's take a short tea break guys and after the tea break we'll be back and we'll dive into these three services one by one so i'll just set a timer of 10 minutes and after that we'll be back guys okay till then i'll just be on mute and after that we'll be back
welcome back to this session everyone hope all of you guys are back after the break just put a confirmation in the chat so that we can move forward is everyone back good to proceed just put a confirmation in the chat if you are back yes roman all right fine so let's uh, move forward guys uh, i have explained to you what is ai i have explained to you what is a ai model and I've also explained to you that in this certification course of AI 102, you will not get questions asked based on how to create a custom AI model. So Azure has already created some AI models for us and it has distributed those ready-made AI models across nine categories or nine services. So all you need to do is you need to learn how to use the AI models in these services. That's all. And uh, to be specific, Azure has distributed the ready-made models across nine services. However, in your AI 102 curriculum, you only need to know the eight services. This ninth service called Phi 3 service is not there in your curriculum. Okay. Although I have given you an overview of all these nine services, okay, um, but remember out of the nine services, uh, you only have eight services in your AI 102 curriculum. The ninth one was recently introduced around two months back. So it's not included in your AI 102 curriculum. All right, so let's focus on our webinar for today now. So in our today's webinar, what we'll do is we'll dive into three services. One is speech service, next document intelligence service, and third open AI service. So let's look into these three services over here. Let's start with our speech service. OK, so I'll go to my Azure portal and now I want to work with my speech service. In Azure, there is a rule. I repeat myself in Azure. There is a rule that whenever you want to work with any service of Azure, you have to create a resource of that service. OK, in Azure, it's a rule that whenever you want to use any service of Azure, you have to create a resource of that service. So if I want to work with speech service, I will first have to create a resource of that speech service. Let me do that. So first in my search bar, I will try service. I can see an option for it in my search result. Let me click on that option. And now what will I do? Since I want to work with speech service, I will go ahead and create a resource of it. So let me create a resource of speech service. I'll click on the create button to do that. When I do that, I'm redirected to a form that I have to fill. So let me fill in the details of the form. The first field in the form is asking me to select subscription. Remember guys that in your Azure account, remember that in your Azure account, you can have more than one subscriptions created. So let's suppose that you are the CEO of a company. Let's suppose that you are the CEO of a company. And you want to ensure that all the employees in your company have access to Azure. So what will you do? You will come to your Azure account and create multiple subscriptions for different, different employees. So one subscription you will create for HR employee. Second subscription you will create for IT employee and so on. For different, different employees, you will create your subscriptions. In each subscription, you can assign different set of permissions. So for example, if you are creating a subscription for someone in the HR team, that person in the HR team is not going to do a lot of work on Azure. Probably that person only needs Azure to store data. So that person will only need access to storage service. So you will only give access to storage service in that subscription. Whereas let's say second subscription you are creating for someone in the IT team. That IT person is going to do a lot of work on Azure. So you will want to make sure that that IT person has access to all the resources of all the services of Azure. So you will assign that permission accordingly. So the point that I'm making is in different, different subscriptions, you can assign different, different permissions. That is one point. Second point is in different, different subscriptions, you can assign different amount of money in it. Let's say the first subscription you created for a HR employee, that HR employee is not going to do a lot of work in Azure. So you only uploaded $5 into that subscription. Whereas the second subscription you created for an IT employee, that IT employee is going to do a lot of work on Azure. 
so for it employee you uploaded 1000 dollars into that subscription and so on so the point that i am making is you can create multiple subscriptions in your azure account and each subscription can have different amount of permissions assigned to it and each subscription can have different amount of money uploaded into it okay so you can select the subscription of your choice that is enough permissions and that is enough money uploaded into it currently i have two active subscriptions both of them have given have been given to me by uh, microsoft okay the first subscription is um, given to me by microsoft it it had originally 100 dollars worth of credit but it is only valid for one month so i requested microsoft for this subscription um and i guess it was given to me around uh, 16th of uh, august so from 16th august up till 15th of september this subscription will be available to me after that this subscription uh, will be removed okay the second subscription has also been given to me by microsoft it also had 100 dollars worth of credit and uh, this was given to me for permanent time okay this will not be taken back from me it is given to me for uh, full time okay so even after years or months this subscription will still stay with me okay so since i am a microsoft certified trainer i asked for these subscriptions for microsoft the thing was uh, i had exhausted my msdn subscription limit there was no money left in it so in order to do my lectures i needed some subscription so for temporary basis i had asked microsoft to give me this first subscription called azure pass Uh, so microsoft said that okay we'll give you one extra subscription but it will only be applicable for one month fine anyway as far as permissions is concerned uh, both of the subscriptions have all the permissions assigned to it so there is no difference in these subscriptions that have been given to be my microsoft so it depends upon who gave that subscription what permissions was given what permissions was assigned in those subscriptions and so on so you need to select the subscription of your choice accordingly okay i will select msdn subscription okay because if i choose azure pass subscription since it's only available up till one month after one month whatever work i do in that subscription will get removed so if i'm doing some work and if i want to stay uh, if i want to keep it for permanent time i will have to choose a permanent subscription with me okay like that different amount of permissions will be assigned to your subscription you can choose the subscription of your choice currently both the subscriptions have been given to me by microsoft fine in your case it will be given to you by your company that you are working with and so on all right so let me choose msdn subscription after that it is saying that okay you are creating a resource of speech service put that resource in some of the other resource group in azure it's mandatory that whatever resource you are creating it has to fall within some of the other resource group now there are many benefits of doing that let's look at the benefits so let's say suppose you are working on a project okay let's suppose you are working on a project let me launch this annotation tool again currently i can see there is some problem while drawing annotation so let me close this annotation tool and let me launch it again so that i can make the drawings better okay i have closed that tool and now let me launch it again Okay, I've launched the tool again. Now let's start. Okay, so I was talking about the second field over here called resource group. So here it's saying that okay, we are creating a resource of speech service. Put that resource in some of the other resource group. In Azure, it's mandatory that whatever resource you are creating, it could be of any service. Whatever resource you are creating, it has to fall within some of the other resource group. There are many benefits of doing that. Let's look at the benefits. So let's say suppose that you are working on a project, and for your project you had to create twenty resources. Let's say one resource is that of speed service, second resource is that of open AI service, third resource is that of SQL service, and so on. Like that, there are many services in Azure, not just AI related services. There are other services in Azure as well. Okay, so like like that, let's say you created twenty resources. now what you want to do is let's say after 6 months the project got over and now these resources for your of your project are of no use for you 
so what you are intending to do you are intending to delete these resources one by one because now these resources are of no, are of no use for you so why to keep it live and you know uh, get unnecessary uh, cost deducted from my subscription so if the resources are of no use for me i will delete those resources right so what you can do you can go into each resource one by one manually and delete those resources individually okay but that could prove to be very tedious you want to delete 20 resources so you will have to go inside each of those 20 resources one by one individually and delete them okay but instead of doing this tedious task why don't we have resources that belong to the same project inside the same exact resource group i repeat why don't we have resources that belong to the same project inside the same exact resource group and when the time for deletion of the resources will come instead of deleting the resources one by one what i can do is i can directly go to the resource group and with a single click of the button i can delete all the resources in that resource group okay so it's like this so if i delete a resource group all the resources in that resource group will automatically get deleted so it's like if i delete a folder all the files in that folder automatically get deleted right similarly if i delete a resource group all the resources in that resource group will automatically get deleted okay right uh, so one benefit of resource group is life cycle management okay that if resources have the same life cycle put them in the same resource group what is the second benefit let's look at that so let's suppose you are working on a project for which you had to create 20 resources and now you want to calculate the total cost incurred by your project okay so uh, what you can do you can go to each resource individually and see the individual cost incurred so for example for the first resource the first resource for the first resource azure charged you 6.2 dollars for the second resource azure charged you 100.9 dollars and so on like that you can go into each resource individually see the cost and then at the end you will have to take the sum of all the costs right that's how you will arrive at total cost incurred by your project but this could be very tedious instead why don't we have resources that belong to same project inside the same exact resource group why don't we have resources that belong to same project inside the same exact resource group and when the time for cost calculation comes i can directly go to the resource group and with a single click of the button i can get a cumulative cost for all the resources in that resource group just by a single click of the button so resource group helps for better cost management as well so one benefit is life cycle management second benefit is cost management like that there are many many benefits in simple terms just remember that resource group helps for better management of resources okay resource group helps for better management of resources and it's a rule in azure that whenever you create any resource it has to fall within some of the other resource group so you can either create a new resource group or select a existing one let me create a new resource group i will call it webinar rg which stands for webinar resource group okay then it's asking me to choose uh, the region for my resource so currently i am creating a resource of speech service it doesn't matter as such uh, in which region you create your resource um, however remember that you choose a region for your speech resource that is closer to your user let's say for example you are creating this resource for someone in the new, in the united states make sure to choose a region closer to united states just for better latency just for better latency okay um that for example your user is in united states then make sure that the resource that you are creating is also uploaded in some server of united states okay so make sure that the reason that you are choosing is closer to your user just for better latency okay so as far as resource of speech service is concerned it doesn't matter as such which resource you choose although select a, sorry it i repeat myself as far as resource of speech service is concerned it doesn't matter as such which re region you choose however choose a region that is closer to your user for better latency okay uh, although one extra point that i want to mention guys is that since the last 2 or 3 months east us is suffering a lot in terms of traffic okay 
since it's the default option, what people do is they try to upload resources uh, in that region only. And then once they create, upload their resources in uh, East US uh, server, then while trying to access the resource, they face a lot of traffic related issues because a lot of people are trying to create resources in that region. Because of that, there's a lot of traffic related issue in East US region. Okay, and I've been observing it since the last three or four months. So uh, if possible, uh, try to choose a region that is different than East US so that we do not get those traffic issues. Previously, East US region was working smoothly. However, since last two, three or four months, there's a lot of traffic issues. So to avoid it, we'll select a different region over here. Let me select something uh, called Sweden Central. Okay, fine. After that, it is asking me to choose a name for my resource. So I'm creating a resource of speech service. Let me assign it a name. So I will assign it a name called webinar speech resource. Okay, make sure that the name that you give is unique. For example, if the name that you give is something like this ABC, then over here it might give you an error saying that this name has already been chosen by someone else. Put a valid and a unique name. Okay, so over here I have done that. Hopefully this name is unique. And yes, it is unique as indicated by this tick mark next to that name. So this is a valid and a unique name. Okay, next it is asking me to choose a pricing tier for my resource. So currently there are two pricing tiers to choose from free and standard. With free tier, you will not be charged for usage. With standard tier, you will be charged for usage. So let's say I'm creating my resource, but let's say I want to use the resource going forward. Then if you do not want to have a additional cost charge based on usage, choose the free tier. With standard tier, some cost will be deducted for usage. However, the disadvantage of free tier is that there is a lot of limitation with respect to usage. With free tier, you will only be able to use the resource for a certain number of times. Okay, so there's a lot of limitations. With standard tier, um, many of those limitations do not exist. Okay, so I'll choose standard tier to avoid those limitations over here. Yes, some costs will be deducted, but that's fine for me. Okay, after that, I will directly jump to review plus create. All these settings like network settings, identity related settings, tag settings, I'll keep it default. I will explain those settings to you uh, today only when the appropriate time comes. But currently I want to keep every setting default. I directly want to jump to review plus create. So there is a button below called review plus create. Let me click on it. With that, I'll directly jump to review plus create section. Now Azure is running a validation in the backend to check if it can give me the things that I'm asking for. If the validation is successful, the create button will be enabled. And now you can see the validation is successful. Because of that, the create button has been enabled. Let me click on it. And with that, the resource of speech service will be created. Okay, with that, a resource of speech service will be created. Okay, you can see I have clicked on the create button and this will create a resource of speech service. So we'll have to wait for one or two minutes. Till that time, let me take the doubts mentioned in the chat. So Atul says, will we get the recording of the session? Yes, Atul, uh, the recording of the session will be uploaded on our official YouTube channel. Um, so on Synergetics YouTube channel, it will be uploaded. Manthan says, since you are a college student, is there any benefit that you can get? I guess Manthan is asking related to subscription, right? So yes, Manthan, Azure does provide um, a free subscription to you that you can avail. So you can just search for Azure free account and it will guide you how you can avail that free subscription. However, it will have some limitations, but yes, you can avail that. Uh, and that's available to all the people, not just students. Anybody who wants to use Azure can use this free account. Okay. All right. Uh, it has certain uh, limitations, but fine. If you want to try out Azure for free, you can use this free account. Okay, I'll give you a link of this in the chat. And you can go through the link and see how you can avail that free account. All right, then we have another student. Rahul says link of certificate. Okay, I had pasted the link earlier as well. Let me paste it once again for you. Okay, I've pasted it once again. Rahul, you can refer that link. Okay, fine. Coming back to our main topic over here. So guys, I uh, 
had created a resource of speech service, right? Let me go to the resource. And now you can see that in order to interact with the resource, there are two main ways. So guys, whatever resource you create of any AI service, there'll be two main ways to interact with it. One will be the without code approach. One will be the without code approach to use the resource. However, the second will be the with code approach to use the resource. I always prefer the with code approach. Why? Because see, in the without code approach also, you will be able to use your resource. In the with code approach also, you will be able to use your resource. It's just that using the with code approach, I can then customize the, I can customize the model output. Okay. Whereas using the without code approach, yes, um, you will use some ready-made AI models. It will give you some output. But if you want to customize it, it, I mean, using the without code approach, you won't be able to do it. In the without code approach, you will only be able to do limited stuff. Okay. So yeah, as far as usage of resources concerned, you can use the resource using the uh, without code approach also. You can try to interact with the resource using the with code approach also. It's just that I prefer the with code approach a lot because once the resource gives me some output, I can customize the output as per my need. Okay. And in today's webinar, we'll do that a lot. All right. So in today's webinar, I will only show you the with code approach. Without for without code approach is very easy. No technical knowledge is required for it. However, in today's webinar, I'll show you the with code approach. Okay. So similarly, the same point applies to our resource of speech service. If I want to interact with it, I can interact with it without code using the without code approach. For that, I just have to click on this button called go to speech studio and I'll be able to interact with the speech resource without code. However, if you want to do it with code, then what to do? Let me show you that. So what I will do is I'll create a coding file. Let me store that coding file in a folder. So I'll create a folder called August webinar. And what I will do is in this folder, I'll try to create my coding files. So the tool that I will use to create a coding file is called Visual Studio. There are multiple tools available. I'm choosing one of them over here called Visual Studio. This is the tool that I like a lot. Okay, so let me open that tool and you can see the tool is trying to open. All right, and now what I will do is uh, I will make sure that whatever coding files I create in this tool, it gets stored in this folder called uh, August webinar folder. Okay, so let me do that over here. So I'll open this folder called August webinar. Let me open it up. Okay, I've opened that folder. Now whatever files I create will be stored in that particular folder only. Okay, now let's move forward. So what I'll do, I'll create another subfolder. Let me call it speech service. And within this, I'll create a coding file. So let me create a coding file. Okay, I'm creating a new file over here. This button that I, that I click was for creating a new file. I'm creating a new file called test.py. This .py extension at the end signifies that in that file, I'm going to write code in Python programming language. Okay, fine. So currently what I want to do is I want to interact with the resource that I created on Azure. But in order to interact with the resource, first I will have to gain authentication to it, right? So this is not, it's not like any Tom, Dick and Harry can uh, access my resource. No, only people who have the necessary authentication, only they will be able to access my resource. Okay, fine. So for uh, getting access, I will have to mention two things. First is the key of my resource. Second is the region in which my resource lies. Okay. So what you can do is on the left hand side, there is a resource management section. And under there, there is an option called keys and endpoint. And here you will be able to get those two important things. First is the key of your resource. And second is the region in which your resource lies. With the help of these two things, you will be able to perform authentication. Okay, 
fine there are two keys shown to you you might have a doubt over here there are two keys shown to you which key do you have to use well it's just that one extra key is given over here for backup purposes just like in our home uh, we have two keys present one is primary key another is secondary key that secondary key exists for backup purposes so if anything happens to the primary key uh, you can use the secondary one just like that over here let's say if uh, anything happens to the primary key due to some reason you are not able to use it okay you can use the secondary key till that point okay so technically you can use any key over here primary secondary doesn't matter okay you can use any key both of them will work all right so two things i need for authentication first is the key of my resource second is the region in which my resource lies okay so let me take the key of my resource and let me paste it in my coding file over here so this is the key of my resource the second thing that i will need is information about the region in which my resource lies so let me go ahead and let me paste my region as well so my region is sweden central so let me paste it in my code over here that my region is sweden central with help of these two things i'll perform authentication in order to perform authentication i will need a library so let me go ahead and let me import it so i will say from the azure folder there is a sub folder called cognitive services inside that sub folder there is another sub folder called speech and i want to refer that sub folder as sdk now inside that sub folder called speech that i have referred as sdk okay inside that sub folder uh there is a file called translation and inside that file i have a python class called speech translation config this is the class that will help me to perform authentication with the speech resource okay so let me ask to ask it to do authentication so i'll pass it two things first is the key of my resource second is the region in which the resource lies with this what will happen authentication will be performed and i'll be able to get access to my resource so if at all i do not get any error at this line that's a indication that access to resource has been granted so in my next line i will print a confirmation message to the user that access to speech resource has been granted if at all while trying to gain access i receive a error in python you guys would know that in python at any line you receive a error then at that line itself the compiler stops working it does not go ahead to the upcoming lines so if at all you get a error at any line in your python code then at that line itself your python compiler stops working it does not move forward okay. so the fact that it moves forward let's say if the compiler moves forward and executes the upcoming line that's an indication that the previous line worked properly without errors okay let me first check if access to resource has been granted or not so what i'll do is i'll try to run the code there are multiple ways to run it one way is by clicking on this run button that you see on the top right hand side at first it will ask me to select the python interpreter so let me do that let me select the python interpreter i will say select 3.11 version fine now that i've selected it let me click on run again this time it will try to run the code inside of this coding file and it says that currently there is a issue while performing that import the issue was there was a spelling mistake so the name of this cognitive service folder was incorrect so let me correct it and after correcting you will see it will work now let me run the coding file again and you will see that authentication has been performed and access to speech resource has been granted now that it has been granted let me move forward so what is my goal which speech resource i want to convert my speech from one language to another so what i will do is uh, i will speak something to my computer so my source will be in english language i want to convert that speech from english to multiple languages let's say i want to convert that speech from english to hindi language i want to convert that speech from Hingli uh, hindi uh, english to french language i want to convert that speech from english to spanish language and so on okay so my source language will be english 
but i want multiple target languages i want multiple target languages one target language could be hindi another target language could be french another target language could be spanish and another could be uh kannada and so on okay so i'll mention this information that um, i'll be speaking something to the machine so my source language will be of english so i'll mention over here that okay i have gained access to the resource so i'll communicate to my resource that i will be speaking something so my speech will be in english language only don't get confused my speech will be in english language only that's what i'm trying to say to my resource okay that my speech will be in english language only okay so i have given the code for english language okay so my source language is english my target language could be hindi french spanish kannada or any other language that i want so let me mention that to my resource as well so i will tell my resource that okay uh, i want multiple target languages so add the tar target languages one by one okay so one target language could be hindi so code for hindi is hi then another target language could be french code for french is fr another target language could be spanish code for spanish is um, es another target language is kannada code for kannada is an and so on okay like that uh, you can get the code for uh, multiple languages over here i'll show you the documentation from where you can find that information okay let me show you let me first search what is the appropriate documentation to share with you ha ah, here is the code guys for different languages so for example for hindi we had a code for hi and so on okay like that we have code for different different languages over here okay let me go ahead and uh, let me give you a link to the same all right so i have mentioned in my code that my source language be, will be english but as far as target language is concerned i want to have multiple target languages of hindi french spanish kannada and so on okay now let's move forward okay let's move forward now before going ahead uh, pradeep has a doubt pradeep says i wrote that import statement how would a fresher know how to write that import statement so pradeep whenever you write any code you always have to look at the documentation so whenever you come to documentation let's say you go to speech service and have a look at the documentation here it says that okay if you want to interact with the speech service with code then what to do what is the necessary imports to do and so on okay so always you should have focus on the documentation and that does not only apply to this topic the one that we are studying going forward any code that you write related to any topic you first need to go into the documentation of that topic from there only you will find that out i also find that out from uh, uh, the documentation so you need to dive into the documentation okay for example you want to work with python so there is documentation for python language available okay it says over here if you want to do speech to text then what to do what is the necessary import to do and so on okay you can go ahead it will give you some ready made code from there for example this code is of c sharp uh, i guess there will be some code available of python so from documentation itself you will figure that out okay you can see from documentation itself you will figure that out that okay this is the necessary import okay now in the documentation it will give you some sample code okay but what it will also do is um, whenever um, Uh, there is a documentation of a concept uh, if at all if it's a open source uh, concept uh, you will be able to see the entire code on github as well okay but um, this speech service is not open source so you will not be able to see the full uh, code for it in uh, on github okay normally for open source concepts they upload code on github okay this is not open source so you will not be able to see it on github but how to perform that import and all of that you will see it from documentation only and that does not apply to only to this concept that we are studying it applies to any concept that you implement 
if you want to write a code for that concept go to documentation of that concept and you will be able to find out which code to use what not to use and so on okay uh yeah so that is about your first point second point can we code to detect the languages of my speech ha pradeep for that you will need a different service speech service will not be the ideal one for the second point that you mentioned for that you will need a different service okay however currently we are interacting with the speech service its job is to translate speech from one language to another that's the job that it does the task that you want to do is different so speech service is not the one that you will use let me give you a uh, let me show you the image the one that i showed you earlier as well so guys if i want to uh, detect languages and so on okay so what we'll do so let's say uh, uh, you are saying um, detect language as in of speech or detect language of text what is the task that you want to do the second point that you mentioned you said detect language acha i guess you have mentioned it over here detect language of speech acha ha detect language of speech then yes for that uh, you can use the speech service okay for that you can use the speech service but let's say if you wanted to detect language of a text okay then for that the appropriate service that you would have, that you should use is language service so it depends on the task that you want to perform okay task to task it will depend if you want to detect language of a speech use speech service if you want to detect language of text use language service and so on so it depends on your task okay so first always the two points that you mentioned buddy your two points will only be answered from the documentation itself yes currently i will come in this webinar i will show you uh, a demo and all of that but that's not the only stuff that you can do for example i'll show you one demo of speech service but that's not the only task that you can do with speech service there are a lot of other things okay the only way to get that information from the documentation okay and that does not only apply to this concept any concept will have a documentation page and from there you will be able to get that information okay coming back to our main point that we are learning currently i have mentioned in my code that uh, my source language will be english but my target languages could be any one out of these four okay fine now let me go ahead and let me uh, mention more code over here okay currently i have communicated to my resource that whatever i will be speaking will be in english language i want to convert english speech to hindi speech i want to convert english speech to french speech i want to convert english speech to spanish speech i want to convert english speech to kannada speech and so on that's what i want to do okay now that i have communicated this information let's move forward pradeep says we marked english is my language instead can we write to detect the input language you can write but currently the speech language as uh, these uh, ai models of the speech service are not that fully capable okay of uh, handling it that's why i'm manually giving it information that do not get confused okay uh, as the speech service will get mature um, there will be lot of updations done and manually it will try to detect correctly currently it does manually try to detect but uh, it does not do it in a much proper way that's why i've given it this information that don't worry about detection i'm giving you that language myself that okay my speech will be english language you only worry about translation part okay so to answer your doubt technically yes you can mention but it's not that fully evolved yet so it might do some mistakes while detecting the language okay that's why i'm not uh, letting that service detect it i'm mentioning it myself that okay this is my uh, language that i'll be speaking you only focus on translation work all right let's move forward uh, coming back to my code okay um, i have mentioned over here that my source language will be in english but my target languages could be any out of these four over here okay let me see what to do so over here um, i will ask my um, user that select the target language of your choice okay i will ask my user over here to input the target language of your choice so i will say enter a target language of your choice
of your choice. Okay. Enter a target language of your choice over here. So over here we'll say, okay, enter a target language of your choice. Uh, and I will say if you want to enter, uh, if you want, if your target language is Hindi, enter the code HI for the same. If your target language is French, enter FR for the same. If your target language is Spanish, enter ES for the same and so on. If your target language is K, uh, Kannada, enter KN for the same. So I've mentioned this information and here I'm asking user to enter a target language of your choice. Let me see how it is looking. I'll try to run the code again. So it is asking me to enter information. Okay, and this text it is showing me, uh, but it's showing me in one single line. Uh, why don't I do one thing for improving the readability? Why don't I divide this across multiple lines? So I'll put this magic command in Python called backslash n, which will divide my statement into multiple lines, into multiple new lines. Okay. Fine. And with this, what will happen is uh, now instead of asking you, instead of showing you the statement in one single line itself, it will show you the statement across multiple lines. You can see it has done that. This has improved the readability a bit. Okay, so it says if you want to enter HI, if you if your target language is uh, Hindi, enter HI. If your target language is French, enter FR. If your target language is Spanish, enter ES and so on. Okay, so the user will enter something, whatever the user wants to enter. And that will be stored in this variable called target language by user. Okay, target language by user. Okay, so the user will mention some target language. Then what to do? Let me go ahead and let me mention. Once the target language is entered by the user, okay, I will ask Azure to do the translation. So for that, first I will have to mention the settings. Okay, so first I'll mention the settings. So let me mention the settings over here. I'll go ahead and I will mention the settings. So I will say uh, that whatever audio I'm speaking, that will be spoken through my default microphone. So let me mention that setting over here. That whatever audio I am speaking, it should be recorded from my default microphone. So I'll say use default microphone equal to true. So from my default microphone, my audio will be recorded. Okay. Uh, so fine. This is my audio setting that I have uh, mentioned. This is my audio setting that I have mentioned, or I should say. Uh, the source speech or oh, fine. Let me uh, write this variable only audio setting. I think it's understandable, right? Audio setting and from the library in that library, there is a class called audio config in that class. I want to specify the setting. Okay, fine. Now let's move forward over here. Let's move forward. I've mentioned that whatever I'll be speaking will be from my default microphone. Now I will ask my resource to do the translation work. OK, so let me ask my resource to do the translation work. So uh, in order for it to do the translation work, I will need to write my code, which I will do it with help of this library that I imported. Let me go ahead and let me write my code. I will ask it to do translation. And uh, fine, let's see how it does it. So currently I will use this class called translation recognizer. It will go ahead and translate speech for us. So first I'll need to pass two things over here. First I'll need to mention to it whether I've got access to the resource or not. Okay, so I'll take this access to resource variable and pass it. From here it will try to see that okay was access to resource successful or not. Okay, if access to resource is successful then using the resource it will try to do some translation. But if you see over here I've mentioned the audio setting that my speech will be recorded from my default microphone. So in order to communicate this audio setting to my resource, as well as other settings, as well as in order to communicate other settings to my resource, okay, I will need access to perform configuration. Okay, I will need access to perform configuration. So let me go ahead and I will um, need access to perform, uh, I will need access to do those changes in the resource also. That okay, I'll communicate to my resource that okay, my 
uh, source language is english my target language is these four languages and i'll be speaking through my default microphone in order for uh, communicating these settings i will need uh, extra authentication over here so let me go ahead and let me do that let me perform that extra authentication so over here uh, i'll perform that extra authentication and i will say please allow me authentication to do changes in my resource over here and uh, for getting authentication two things i will need key of the resource and the region in which the resource lies with that i will get access to perform changes in the resource with that i will get access to perform changes in resource okay fine so this class i am calling to do the translation work this class needs two things first it sees that okay do you have access to the resource or not and second thing it sees is do you have access to perform changes in the resource or not once you have both the things okay once you have both the things uh, your uh, resource will be ready to do the translation work your resource will be ready to do the translation work remember that with this line of code translation won't happen it's just that it will be ready to do the translation work okay it will be ready to do the translation work once it's ready i will ask my user that okay please speak now okay please speak now okay so there is a indication to the user that okay please speak now once this message is shown to the user the user will try to speak something and whatever the user is speaking okay whatever the user is speaking the resource which is ready to do the translation the resource which is ready to do the translation it will recognize that speech in one go it will take that speech in one go do the translation and then it will give you the translation results so i want to see the translation results so i'll use the get method to get the translation results so here what i'm doing i'm asking my resource which is ready to do the translation that okay resource now that you are ready to do the, do the translation take the speech in one go do the translation and then whatever are the translation results the user wants to get the translation results back okay so it will get the translation results back to the user and i will save the results in this variable over here by default you will see guys what will happen is uh, currently i have specified four target languages so my resource which is doing the translation it will do the translation in all the four languages okay it will do the translation in all the four languages but what do i want i want translation in only my target language for example if a user entered a target language called hindi i only want to see the translation result in hindi but that is not how the resource behaves by default the resource gives the translation in all the specified target languages but luckily guys we are interacting with the resource with code and you know the uh, benefit of using the with code approach the benefit is that you can customize the results so yes currently the resource is giving you some results over here but we'll try to customize it now okay fine we'll see what will happen but behind the scenes what will happen is guys our speech will be taken our speech will be taken okay that speech will be converted to text so let uh, that speech will be converted to text so let's say our speech was in english language that speech will be converted to text of english language and that text of english language will be converted to text of other target languages in my scenario i had four target languages hindi french spanish and kannada okay once text of english language is converted to text of your target languages then the text of your target languages will be converted to speech again okay it will be converted to speech again okay that's what i want to do and have a look at the results up till now what we have done is we have followed the first three steps behind the scenes the first three steps will have been implemented okay you will see that it will, it will take our speech convert it to a text of english language and that text of english language will be converted back to text of other target languages okay it will be converted to text of other target languages and have a look okay i'll print my results to you and have a look the same thing will happen out of the four steps the three steps are, have been performed up till now let me run the code for you and out of the four steps that i wanted 
three steps have been performed. Let me run the code. It is asking me to enter a target language of my choice. Let me enter Hindi. So for Hindi, I will enter a code of HI and see what happens. It, it will then ask me to speak, so I'll speak something, okay? Okay, currently I get an error. Let's understand what is that error. Is it related to uh, a traffic issue or is it related to something else? I guess it's related to something else, not traffic issue. Let's check though. Uh, currently, I am writing my code over here. I don't think there is any. Uh, changes in my code that I need to do. I asked it to enter a target language, use my default microphone. Uh, then I wanted it that, OK, whenever I am asking it to do changes, it should be ready to do those changes. Uh, I don't think any such change I am doing. Uh, OK, one thing that I want to change is before passing on this information. See, previously this information of uh, source language and target language was directly communicated. But this information about default microphone was not directly communicated to the resource. I was indirectly communicating to it. So in order, in, in order for indirectly communicating to it, what I did was I first. I'm now making sure that. Uh, I have access to perform the changes. So in fact, this code that is giving me access to perform the changes, let me put it at the top. OK, this gives me access to perform indirect changes. So I'm doing one indirect change, which is to make sure that I use my default microphone to take my speech. That indirect information, I'm communicating that information indirectly for that. I did authentication once again, so that authentication, let me mention it at the top. And after that, I don't think any other uh, change I should uh, have in my code. Let me introduce it once again. Enter a target language. OK, same error. So I guess the error might be with respect to any code that I wrote. I guess is my spelling mistake and everything correct? Runtime error. Let's see. We'll try to solve this error. It might be a small error and this small error will try to solve. OK, let me check. This is fine. This line of code seems fine. The issue occurred over here. Right, so why did the issue occur over here? Uh, translation recognizer. Uh, so OK, let me do one thing. This particular information. OK. Uh, this particular information. Let me get back the same code that I had. Uh, it's just that currently I'm asking that, OK, I'm doing this indirect change. OK, wherein I'm uh, trying to uh, take my speech from my default microphone. So I want to communicate this setting to my resource, but I'll communicate in an indirect way. OK, because direct way is not possible to communicate this thing. So indirect way I'll communicate. So in order to communicate it in an indirect way, I'll have to do the authentication again, which I did. That authentication information, let me pass it through this parameter called audio config. I'm introducing this extra parameter called audio config. I hope now uh, that information is current, uh, correctly set. Uh, OK, that I wanted to do this indirect change wherein I wanted to communicate to my resource that I'll be taking my speech from my default microphone. That information I wanted to communicate to my resource, but I wanted to communicate communicate in an indirect way. So for that, I performed authentication again, and uh, that authentication information I'm passing, but I'm passing it to the relevant parameter. I thought without that parameter, it should work, but fine, it's not working. So let me pass it to the relevant parameter, and let me check now if it works. Okay, it is asking us to enter a target language of our choice. Let's enter Hindi. Then it'll ask me to speak something. Hello, how are you? OK, and you can see what it has done over here, guys. Exactly as expected, it has taken a speech of English language, converted it to text of English language, and that text of English language, it converted it to text of other target languages. So you can see, you can see the translation in uh, 
Hindi language. You can see the translation in French language. You can see the translation in Spanish language. You can see the translation in Kannada language and so on. Okay, so out of the four steps that I wanted to perform, first three steps are done. It's just that last step is left. Okay, so let's see it. Fine. But uh, you might wonder that, okay, uh, currently you are able to see uh, the text of your target languages. What about the text of your input that you gave? Let me go ahead and let me print that information as well to you. I'll go ahead and I will print that. I will say that my original text, I want to show it to the user. So let me go ahead and let me print my original text. So I will say my original text is so and so. After getting my original text, let me go ahead and let me print the translation results as well. Okay, I'll print the translation results as well over here. Okay, let's see. I'll try to run my code again. And now you will see the original text also here. Let's see whether that happens or not. Let's see whether that happens. I'll go ahead and run my code again. Okay, so run it again. It is asking me to enter a target language of my choice. So let me enter Hindi. Hello, I am in a section of AI 102. So you can see what it has done. It has taken a speech of English language, converted it to text of English language. You can see that text. Okay. And that that text and then that text of English language it converted to text of other target languages. As I mentioned, by default, it will convert it to all the four specified target languages. And you can see the translation in Hindi. You can see the translation in French. You can see the translation in Spanish. You can see the translation in Kannada. Okay. But what do I want? I don't want the translation in all the four language target languages. I only want the translation my specified target language. Luckily, guys, we are working with, we are interacting with the resource using the with code approach. The benefit of interacting the uh, interacting with the resource using the with code approach is that you can customize the results. So I'm, I'm getting my results. Now I will try to customize it. I will say don't show the uh, results of all the target languages. Only show the result of my specified target language. So I will say. Give me the translations only of my specified target language. Fine. And you will only see the translation in your language over here. Okay. Fine. And with this, we are trying to customize our result over here. Let's see if that works. I'll try to run the code again and let's see whether that works or not. So I'll click on the uh, run button to run my coding file over here. Let's click on that run button now. It is asking me to enter a target language of my choice. Let's suppose I'm entering Hindi. So now what should happen? It should take my speech, which will be in English language. It will convert it to text of English language. And then that text will be converted to text of other target languages. OK. Uh, and what I wanted to do was I only wanted to see the text of my specified target language. My specified target language was Hindi. And now you should only see the uh, text of your specified target language, which is Hindi. Let's see whether that works. Let's see whether that works. Hello, I am in a lecture of AI 102 with other students. Okay. Currently, it gave an error. I guess there is a spelling mistake over here. My mistake. Let me try to correct it. There should be an S at the end. Okay, let me clear the uh, terminal. Let me run the code again. Currently, okay, there is an issue. That HI, I wanted to write it in my terminal. It got wrote in my coding file. Not a worry. Let me run the code again. This time it should work. It is asking me to enter a target language of my choice. Let me enter Hindi. Okay, then it will ask me to speak something, so I'll speak. Hello, I'm in a session of AI 102 with other students. So you can see what it has done. It has taken a speech of English language, converted it to text of English language, as you can see over here. And that text of English language was translated to text of Hindi language. Okay, 
So out of the four steps, guys, out of the four steps, my first three steps are done. My first three steps are done. Only last step is left. What is that last step, guys? What is that last step? Out of the four steps, my first three steps are done. What is my last step? Can anyone mention the last step? It's shown to you on your screen. What is my last step, Pradeep? What is my last step over here? Huh, so that text in Hindi language, I want to convert it into speech. So I want to do text to speech, right? I want to do text to speech. Okay, so let's see how to do that over here. I want to do that text to speech conversion. So in order to do that text to speech conversion over here, I'll just go ahead and mention it in my code that what are the voices that I should use to do that text to speech conversion. Now, Azure has recorded many voices, guys, and you can use the voice of your choice. OK, uh, for example, for French, there is a voice called Henry Neural. For Spanish, there is a voice called Ervira Neural and so on. You can get that information from the documentation page. OK, so for example, if I let me just show you that. So I want to do text to speech for that. I will have to use some of the voices. I'll click on text to speech option here. I will have to use some of the voices and let me show that to you. For example, for Spanish, you can see we have a lot of voices. One of them is Elvira neural. OK, similarly for Hindi, we'll have a voice like Madhur neural for Kannada. We have Gagan neural and so on like that. We have different different voices guys. OK, from this documentation page, you can get information about that voice. So what I want to do, I'll just go ahead and mention that particular information that depending on the target language, which particular voice to use. So I will say that if the target language is Hindi, if let's say a user mentioned a code like HI, that means user wants to convert it into Hindi language. For Hindi language, use this particular voice code of Madhur Neural. You will see for Hindi, there is a voice called Madhur Neural. You can see for Hindi over here, there are multiple voices. One of them is Madhur Neural. So I'll take the voice code and mention it in my coding file. Similarly, for other languages, we have different voice codes. For French language, we have a voice code called Elvira Neural. You can get that voice code from the documentation page over there. OK, Elvira Neural. Similarly, if suppose the user wants to convert it into Spanish language, then for Spanish language, we have a code called. Uh, I guess for Spanish, it's Elvira Neural, if I'm not wrong. For Spanish, it's Elvira Neural. For French, I believe we have Henry Neural. Let me just search. Do we have something like Henry Neural? Yes, for French, we have one of the voices, which is Henry Neural. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention the same. Similarly, for Kannada, we have uh, voices. For Kannada, one of the voices is Gagan Neural and so on. I'll just mention that. OK, I've pasted the documentation page link in the chat. You can get the voice codes from there. So fine. We have mentioned that these are the voice codes that I want to use. All right. Now let me go ahead and let me communicate to my resource that these are the voice codes to use. So in order to uh, communicate to our resource, uh, what we'll do is uh, we have got access to perform changes in the resource. So I'll use that object which will allow me to perform changes in the resource. And then I will communicate to my resource that which particular voice name you have to use. So I will just communicate which particular voice you have to use over here. Let me communicate that. So I will say you will get it from this dictionary called voices. So get it from this dictionary called voices and get the voice code based on the target language entered by the user. If the target language entered by the user is Hindi, then use this particular voice code. If the target language entered by the user is FR, use another voice code. If the target language entered by the user is ES, use Elvira neural voice code and so on. So with this line, I'm mentioning to my resource that get the voice name depending on the target language entered by the user. OK, once it's uh, done, now I will make my resource ready to speak. So for that, 
first all of these uh, changes that I've done in my resource, I will have to pass it to a class. So let me go ahead and let me pass it to this class over here called speech synthesizer, which will generate the speech based on the changes that I did in my resource. It will generate the speech based on the settings that I've done in my resource over here. OK, so with this line, my resource will be ready to speak. My resource will be ready to speak. Once the resource is ready to speak, I will ask with that, OK, now that you are ready to speak, do the, uh, I mean, speak something. OK, so let me write the code for asking it to speak. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing text to speech conversion, right? Text to speech conversion. So I'll say take this text and uh, give out the speech in one go. OK, take the text and give out the speech in one go. Which text to take? Take the original text, OK, or sorry, take the translated text. I should save my translated text over here. Take that translated text. And uh, whatever content is there in that translation, a uh, translated text, speak it out. Whatever content is there in that translated text, speak it out. OK, take that text, convert it to voice and get the voice back so the user can hear it. OK, get the voice back so the user can hear it. With this, your code is now ready and um, your entire task will be done. So you wanted to perform these four steps. Is this that three steps were already done? One last step was left, which was to convert text to speech. And we have written code for that step as well. This code is doing is, to, is for doing that text to speech conversion. OK, let's see whether it works. But for that, what I will have to do is uh, I will have to share my screen in such a way that you can hear my system audio as well. So let me share it again. But this time I will share my screen in such a way that I include my system audio sound. OK, so that you can hear the speech generated by the resource. Otherwise, you would not you would have not been able to hear it. OK, let's see whether it works. Let's run our code and let's see whether it works or not. So I'll try to run my coding file by clicking on the run button. It is asking me to enter a target language of my choice. Let me enter Hindi. Then I will speak something. Hello, I am in India delivering a session on AI 102. AI 102. Okay, but it didn't do it. Why did it didn't do it? It didn't, it just gave me the AI 102. It didn't say the entire thing. Okay, let's see why. Let's see why. Target language entered by the user. It was HI. So if it's HI, this is the voice code to use. Is there any mistake in my voice code? I, I only heard AI 102. I didn't hear any other stuff. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Is there some issue over here? Uh, is there some issue? I have. I'm asking it to enter a target language. Based on that target language entered by the user, I'm selecting the voice. The voice is also fine. Madhur neural. Uh, what is the issue? HI. Oh, let me try once again. Hello, how are you? No, I didn't hear the voice. Why I didn't hear the voice? Mm, I didn't hear the voice back. I didn't hear the voice. Mm, see speech synthesizer, this is fine. I'm giving it access to do those changes. Speech synthesis voice name. Okay, so my mistake, guys, it should be a S. It should not be a S at the end. My mistake. Okay, so that one change I will do, and now it should work. Yeah, now it should work. OK, let me enter a target language Hindi, then I'll ask it something. Hello, I'm in India delivering a session on AI 102. Hello, I'm in AI 102 par ek satra de raha hu. OK, guys, were you able to hear it? Were you able to hear it? I was able to hear. I don't know about you guys. Were you able to hear my system audio? That translated speech? Yes or no? Yes, right? Achha, so you guys were able to hear it. 
okay like this you can do the translation in other languages as well let's say kannada language you can select kannada language okay and then i'll speak something hello how are you hello neevu hegidiri and you can uh, hear the translated uh, speech in kannada language now okay like that you can do the translation in other languages as well okay so like this uh, guys you need to perform your task uh, what you can do is uh, try one thing okay try one thing over here uh, take this code that i am giving and uh, put this code in any tool that you want so uh, if you guys do not have a coding tool right now in your laptop um, let me check if with google collab it would work although google collab is a external tool so i am skeptic whether it will have access to my speech drivers or not let me check whether it has access to my speech drivers although i doubt that it won't have i don't think it will have access to my speech drivers uh, because it's a external tool so technically it should not but still let me try so let me try over here uh, let me create a new coding file and let me see google collab has access to my speech drivers so i can perform the same task over there though i feel uh, google collab won't have access to my local speech dri uh, speech drivers local voice drivers because it's a external tool it's not there on my local machine so it will not have access to my drivers of my local machine so let me try if it has access well and good ha ah, no model name is sure okay not to worry what we'll do is currently uh, it is not taking that library we'll go ahead and we'll ask it to install that library so let's ask it to install that library over here so at the top also fine at the bottom uh, let's say i'm going to write code to uh, install a library in this scenario i will install the library of my choice which is azure cognitive speech so i'll just say pip space install azure cognitive speech okay fine let's install that library in my local machine it was already installed that's why i didn't get any error with respect to that library in this google collab tool it was not installed okay now let me go ahead and let me ask it to run the above code again it is asking me to enter a target language of my choice let's see whether it will do the entire task or not i just want to check if it has access to my speech drivers of my local machine let's check uh, it doesn't have access to my speech drivers so yeah okay uh, so you will have to work with a local tool guys so how many of you guys have a local python tool in your laptop i was wondering if we could use a external tool but that external tool will not have have, have access to our speech drivers so do you have a tool like jupyter notebook i mean if you have visual studio well and good even a tool like jupyter notebook will work if you do uh, then well and good you can just copy paste my code and run it over there okay i'll do one thing i'll send you my coding file in the chat you have visual studio okay some of you guys are mentioning that they have visual studio okay i am not able to share my coding file so let me share my full code for some reason i am not able to share my coding file so let me share my full code so just take this code copy it and paste it and uh, it should work okay it is that you will need a local tool i thought of using a external tool like google collab but uh, i had a doubt that it might not be able to access the speech drivers of my local machine because it's a external tool it's not there on my local laptop so it won't be able to access the speech drivers of my local laptop and that was indeed the case so we cannot use a external you cannot use a external tool to try out this code use a local tool that installed in your local laptop something like visual studio jupyter notebook any coding tool will work all right so this was about our first resource wherein we try to create a resource of speech service 
and we did try to do some tasks. Remember, what does the speech service do? Its only job is to translate speech from one language to another. That is its only job. Okay, that is its only job. And this is the work. Uh, this is the workflow that it follows. It takes the speech of one language, converts it to text of the same language. That text of same language, it converts it to text of the target language. That text of target language, it converts it to speech of target language again. This is the workflow that it follows. Okay, so I hope the our first demo made sense. Uh, all right, so guys, did our first demo make made sense? I understand if you are new to coding, uh, the reason for writing each and every uh, word in the code uh, could be difficult for you. But the flow of the code made sense, guys. Flow of the code, yes, right? Okay. All right. In this lecture, I'm not explaining Python to you because that's not the goal of a session. In this session, I'm explaining to you how to um, use the ready made AI models that Azure has created. So, knowing Python is a prerequisite. If you do not know it, not a worry. Um, you still understand the flow of the code. Is that the reason behind writing each and every word within a code will not make sense? It's fine. Okay. Anyways, so this was our first demo. Um, so, I've covered my one service already. In total, um, in our today's webinar, we'll try to cover three services, out of which I've shown you the demo of one service already. Two more services are yet to come. So we'll do that after the lunch break. OK, so let's take a lunch break of one hour. After that, we'll be back and we'll move on to our two remaining services. So uh, one service we have already covered, speech service. Our second service that we'll cover today is document intelligence service. And our third service that we'll cover today is open AI service. OK, so let's take a lunch break of one hour. And after that, we'll be back, guys. And uh, we'll move on to our remaining services. Till the lunch break, I'll be on mute and after the lunch break, we'll come back and we'll see more stuff. <laughs> 